Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the combined source panel and vortex panel method code that I've written here for a single airfoil. The functions needed are shown down here. You'll need the XFOIL loading program, the IJ and KJ geometric integrals for both the source panel method and the vortex panel method, and same with the streamline source panel method, vortex panel method, and the compute circulation function. You'll also need the XFOIL executable and you'll need, if you want to load airfoils, uh, instead of just making them in XFOIL, you'll need the uh, airfoil underscore DAT underscore Selig folder that contains all these Selig format airfoils. Down here you'll find the references, and these are the same as from the vortex panel method video, and the new one here is the source vortex panel method system of equations, which is the previous video that I posted. So if you want to know where the equations in this video come from, just go back and watch that video. So these sections up here are the same as we've done for the previous videos, the source panel and the vortex panel method videos, and this is now where the differences are. So now we'll just go through this computation section a little bit. We're going to need both the source panel and vortex panel geometric integral values, so that's why we call both of these functions here. These are the same as from the previous videos, so now we have i, j, k, and l. Then we're going to populate the A matrix first. In, in this uh, region right here, we're just doing it for the uh, source panels. So we have the main diagonal, we're just putting pi, and then on the off diagonals we have the uh, I geometric integral. And then what we want to do is populate the right column of the A matrix. This is taking care of the vortex panel strength term of the equation, so that's why we're doing the negative sum of all the k values. Then we're going to the uh, let's see, to the bottom row of the A matrix. So now recall that we need to apply the cut a condition. And so this is the bottom row of the A matrix. This is for the uh, for all the source panel strengths. That's the term from the source panel strengths. And then the last row, last column, this is for this is the term from the cut a condition for the vortex strength. And so we have the negative sum of the uh, L terms plus that 2 pi term as well. Then we're going to move to the right-hand side and populate the B array. This is the normal one that you've seen in the other videos. And then we want to populate that last value or the last element of the B array with the uh, cut a condition equation. Again, looks very similar, but now we have the first panel and the nth panel in here. Then we're going to compute the result array in the same way that we did before by just solving this matrix system. And I call it res array because we have both the source panel strengths and the vortex panel strength in there. So we separate them out by saying uh, every single term but the last term, those are all the source panel strengths. And then the last term in that array is the vortex panel strength. Now in order to compute the pressure coefficient, we need to compute the tangential velocity on each panel. So that's what we're doing in this section. I've broken it up into four terms to make it a little bit easier to read, and then we just add them all together to get the tangential velocity. First term is the uniform flow term. Second term is from the source panels when J is not equal to I. That's why we're using J here. And then we have the vortex panel term when J is equal to I. And then we have the vortex panel term uh, when J is not equal to I, and we're using L. We just add them all together to get the tangential velocity, and then compute CP in the normal way. Then in this section, I'm computing the lift and the moment coefficients to compare to the XFOIL results. Uh, we have the CL that's decomposed from the axial and normal uh, forces to get the lift coefficient. Then we have the Kutta-Joukowsky lift equation formula, just based off of the vortex panel strength, uh, compared to the XFOIL. And then we have the moment coefficient, again, decomposed uh, to compare with the XFOIL moment. Okay, we're going to start with our default test case, which is the NACA 0012, just to make sure that we know what's going on. Up here, you, you'll be able to see in these plots a comparison between the Kutta-Joukowsky lift and the XFOIL lift coefficient. In this case, uh, what we're seeing makes sense. Look down here, we have zero lift, um, which compares, obviously, with the zero lift you should get for a symmetric airfoil at zero angle of attack. Same with the moment coefficient. We can maybe zoom in on, like, a single point and make sure that the uh, upper and lower surfaces are the same, and so you have to zoom in pretty far, and you could see that, yeah, they're they're very close to being the same uh, pressure. So this looks pretty good as our test case. Next, I'm doing the same 0012 airfoil, but now we're running it at an angle of attack of 5 degrees. Again, you can see that the comparison with the XFOIL pressure coefficient plot is quite good, and that the lift coefficients uh, compare well with the XFOIL, and the moment coefficient is still very low. Now I've moved to a cambered airfoil, the 2412 at zero degrees angle attack. Again, you can see that the plot uh, looks pretty good, and that if you look down here, the lift coefficient uh, is lower than the XFOIL out at that third digit, and that the Kutta-Joukowsky lift pre uh, predicts a better lift coefficient than just the uh, 
the normal CL that we've computed. Moment coefficient's also pretty close. Now we're looking at the 2412 again at now 5 degrees angle of attack. CP plot still looks pretty good, uh, but now the lift coefficient you can see is actually uh, quite far under predicting for the for the Kozikowski and also for just the normal uh, lift coefficient. Moment coefficient also now farther off. Now I've moved to loading airfoils from our database as opposed to making them in foil, and so now we're doing 5 degree angle of attack with the AG18 airfoil. I've I think this is the one that I used in my Vortex panel that didn't work well. It might have been the AG-17, I forget. But anyway, now you can see that the that the plots match quite well between the X-Foil and this method. Uh, the Kudzikowski lift compares favorably to the X-Foil, whereas, uh, whereas the other method that we use to compute CL does not. Uh, the moment coefficient is also uh, pretty good here, though. Okay, now I've loaded this sort of weird airfoil, again, at 5 degrees angle of attack. The CP plot, even though it has this weird disturbance in the middle, uh, based off of a, a little bump in the top surface of the airfoil, the, this plot looks actually pretty good. Uh, this CL is okay. It's not, it's not really that great. And the moment coefficient is, is also kind of off. Uh, and you'll note that in this plot, the, uh, it messes up my upper lower designation for this airfoil, and that's because the way that I do it simply is to just base it off of the upper and lower surfaces having the same number of points and then just splitting it in half, and that's not the case for this airfoil. So really it's probably better to divide it by the trailing edge and leading edge point inversion, but I don't really care about that, but that's just the reason that this is off. Here's just another weird airfoil. I've tried to pick some that have a little bit of a weird distribution of the CP to show that the method actually works pretty well. This is another weird airfoil where now the Kudzikowski lift actually overpredicts what the X-foil says, but the other method is underpredicted. Uh, the moment coefficient is, is pretty okay, and you can see that it captures this leading edge kind of weirdness uh, pretty well. So far, I've only showed you cases that have worked pretty well, but here's a case where this method still doesn't totally work, obviously. So you can see that the trailing edge has some issues here, and obviously the CP plot is not correct, and obviously the lift coefficient down here for both of these methods of computing it are way off. This particular airfoil has a sharp trailing edge, uh, but that's not the reason that this necessarily fails, because the MB whatever airfoil that I did previously has a sharp trailing edge, and the NACA 2412 that I did before has an open trailing edge, so it can handle it fine. It's just something's off with some of the airfoils that uh, this particular method of solution kind of blows up. So here's a case that I've picked that just shows that there's like this weird glitch in the middle of the upper surface of the airfoil where it kind of decreases and increase and then comes back and does fine. The lift coefficients are reasonable, so is the moment coefficient-ish, but there's something weird that's happening here. And so that previous case was with this airfoil with 170 points, but now I've decreased to 100 points. Now you can see that middle panel uh, glitch is gone. So uh, if you run into an issue like that, maybe just change the number of panels. It might have a little bit of an impact on it. You can see the lift coefficients are reasonable, so is the moment coefficient. Another question you might have is whether the KJ lift is better than the other lift coefficient. Uh, in this case, you can see that it is better, and the other one is, is actually quite far off, whereas the moment coefficient is pretty good. And this obviously is picking up this weirdness at the leading edge pretty pretty well. So that previous plot was for zero degrees angle of attack. I've run the exact same thing for five degrees angle of attack, and now you can see that actually the other method of calculating the lift coefficient is closer to the X-foil, whereas the Kudzikowski now overpredicts it. Uh, so that's just something interesting where it's not necessarily the case that one is always going to give you a better answer, a closer answer, I guess, to X-foil than the other. And here's just another random example of one where actually the, both of the lift coefficients uh, way over predict the X foil lift coefficient, but we are picking up uh, on the CP plot. It looks like it's pretty uh, pretty good at following the X foil, and we do pick up this weird trailing edge uh, hump. And the last thing I wanted to show was just changing the number of panels. Uh, so here's the 0012 at 5 degrees angle of attack. This is what we ran before with 170 panels. I mean, we can bump this down to something like 35. That probably would have been not so great in my other code. And now you can see that even at, with 35 panels, uh, you're getting an okay lift coefficient, and the uh, pressure coefficient plot actually matches pretty close to the X-foil. So you can go pretty low in terms of your panel count on these airfoils with this method and still get pretty reasonable results. So hopefully this video showed you how to update to the combined source and vortex panel method code and provided a few interesting examples of the results that you can get. And this should go without saying, but please don't base any airplane designs off my code. My videos were really only meant to show you all the math, derivation, and coding implementation in order to get a working panel code. Uh, so in my next and final video of this series, I'll show you how to update this code to work with any number of airfoils. And thanks for sticking around and thanks for watching.